Hey, thanks for having me, Mike. You got it. Uh, so we got the draft. We got free agency. Where is the next step for the NFL as uh, we got the two phases, the major phases of the offseason in the books? Yeah, your rosters are pretty much cobbled together now. So, you know, most teams, you, you take 90 to camp and, you know, everybody's on hand. You start uh, rookie men in camp, so it'll begin this weekend and you go there, continue OTAs. Uh, the mandatory mini camp, and then you're in the training camp. So, this is really the the start uh, of the 2015 season, where you start to to think about pairing down to 53. All right, uh, in that uh, movement here, we got a lot of the people drafted. We'll get into the draft in a little bit, but one guy who wasn't drafted, Leal Collins. Do you find this in- this situation a bit interesting now? I mean, here's a guy who could have been a first round pick. He now kind of gets to choose where he wants to go if he so pleases. You wonder if you're a guy who, you know, I got drafted by Buffalo and this guy gets to pick where he wants to go. Is the NFL a little concerned with what could happen, uh, you know, and this guy gets to kind of pick and choose where he wants to go? No. You know, if you think about it, I mean, you're talking about a guy who there's no doubt about it would have been a first-round pick, and and there's a, a possibility he could have been top 15 either. I think the floor would have been Cincinnati. Uh, since they picked a tackle at 21. Uh, he certainly wasn't going to fall below that spot. And you're talking about a potential signing bonus in, in the high seven figures or even the eight figures, depending on how high he goes. Uh, and now, because he goes undrafted, yeah, he can pick his team. But understand, if you're going to be a first-round pick, uh, that particular team, that ever uh, whoever chooses you, is going to be counting on you. So, obviously, you know you're going to be wanted. Uh, and in this instance, uh, you might be able to pick Miami, say, if you want to live in South Florida or something like that, weather-wise. Uh, but, you know, undrafted free agents, the signing bonus is capped at, at 90000 just under 90000 So, basically, he can't sign for a signing bonus more than that, and he would have had minimum uh, high seven figures if he was a first round pick. Yeah, no doubt the financial uh, ramifications are not very good there for him. But down the road, who knows? I mean, he gets to pick where he kind of wants to play. We'll see how much uh, interest there is in him. Do you anticipate that there will be a lot of interest in him? Well, it's too early. I mean, he spoke to the police in Baton Rouge today, according to his lawyer. Uh, and, you know, in the best case scenario, if he's cleared completely, he's going to have a, a lot of interest. I mean, he's a, a, a top tier talent. But I think, as I wrote last week, we've all seen an update line NBC to say, you know, you can't, uh, until he's completely cleared, you can't rule anything out. And, you know, you hope that's not the end game. Uh, you hope he's smart enough not to get involved in something. Uh, but unfortunately, we've seen some pretty bad stories off the field in the NFL, and, and no team's going to touch him until he's completely cleared uh, by the authorities in Louisiana. Well, another uh, guy who has been tied to some off-the-field stuff was Randy Gregory. He fell to number 60 to Dallas. Will the Cowboys get the last laugh here, or did you think they took a guy with just too many red flags? Well, that's I joked. Uh, you know, maybe they're going to replace the star with the red flag, but uh, <laughs> on the logo. But you know, it is it, it is what it is. It's the ultimate risk reward pick. Uh, I mean, you're getting a top ten talent uh, that late in the draft. If it works, you know, Jerry Jones is going to look like a genius. If it doesn't, you know, people are going to bring up the fact that he keeps uh, bringing in guys, whether it's Greg Hardy, whether it's Randy Gregory. Uh, you know, there was a talk. There's talk they wanted to bring in Adrian Peterson, if possible. So clearly, Jerry Jones doesn't care about much other than winning. Uh, if they can get this kid on the right track, he's got phenomenal talent. He's the best pure pass rusher in this draft. There's no question about it. And, and if you project it that way in a football sense, he could be their best pass rusher since you know, DeMarcus Ware. But uh, if he blows up, and he was taken off a lot of teams' boards, not only for the marijuana issues, uh, but he was late to a number of meetings he had with teams. Uh, they questioned his maturity. Some people even question his mental state. So there's a lot going on with Randy Gregory. John McMullins, the NFL editor, SportsNetwork.com, here on 97.3 ESPN. Some other storylines, the quarterback's always very interesting to watch. But we didn't really have a whole hot lot of them taken here. I think seven overall. Brett Hundley, another interesting one, didn't go to the fifth round. So it looked like the quarterback play in this particular draft was not very good. The question really is, 
this draft and moving forward, do we think we're going to see more and more of that with the way these offenses in college are a lot different than they are in the NFL? Yeah, I you know, I've said it for months. I mean, this is one of the worst quarterback drafts in the last 20 years, and I think that that was borne out by uh, the fact that as few quarterbacks went in, in, you know, I think seven overall. And if you think about a, a quarterback star of league, uh, that's a shock, and, and that's always a concern. And when you talk about guys like Hunley uh, specifically with his athleticism, uh, yeah, I don't think the college game uh, is really helping these kids uh, projecting to the next level. And it's tough because it's 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 difficult to serve two masters if you're a college football coach. On the one hand, you have to win to keep your job. And on the other hand, you're trying to get these kids ready for the next level. Uh, you know, it, it, what's going to win out in the end? You know, people generally take care of themselves first. So college coaches are concerned winning on their level. And if that means running a spread offense, that's what they're going to run, even though that doesn't project very well to the next level. John, let's take a look at some of the uh, you know picks here, too. I and mean, Obviously, that Thursday night with that first round, uh, you got Winston at the top. The Mariota story turned out to be a dud for the most part. What is your feeling on how that all ended up materializing? Chip Kelly said, we never discussed any players. You know, they wanted them, you know, Mariota pretty much the whole time. Did the number two spot go as you really thought it would go? No, I, I thought the Eagles were going to make a significant push. I think they did. I, I had sources in both Philadelphia and Nashville said they did. And you can believe whatever you want with Chip Kelly. But, I mean, if you take him at face value, in essence, what he said is he, he tried to jump from 20 to 2 by offering a, a first-round pick and a third-round pick. Now, you know, if that's true, why even make the phone call? Because we all know what, uh, you know, the Redskins did to move up a few spots for RG3 a couple of years ago. Uh, the truth of the matter is there were names bandied about, Fletcher Cox, obviously, Michael Kendricks, obviously, and, and then some of the other guys, you heard Benny Curry, you heard Boykin, you heard Sam Bradford at times. That's where it, it, it gets a little murkier on, on who actually was offered to Tennessee. But the reality in the NFL is, and I think a lot of fans don't realize it, is draft picks are valued far more than players, even pro- proven players. Uh, so the fact that, you know, the Titans wanted draft choices, and it started probably with three first-rounders. Uh, and once the Eagles didn't go in that direction, they were comfortable enough with Mariota. And I think that was the biggest surprise. Because on the surface, he doesn't fit in as a Ken Wisenhunt-type quarterback. And I think it's going to be difficult for him moving forward, but we'll see how it works out. John, after this draft now, Sam Bradford remains. What is going to happen with this extension here? Well, he's going to get extended at some point. The question is when and, and, and for how long. And, you know, it's a concern because obviously you have a, a, a player coming off consecutive torn ACLs and back-to-back seasons. Uh, but clearly, if you look at the quarterback landscape uh, and the fact that obviously, you know, Mark Sanchez is not the answer and Nick Foles was moved, you made a significant investment in Sam Bradford by giving up a second-round pick. Uh, you know, but you can sit and wait at least a little bit and see if he's healthy. Uh, there's no real uh, penalty for the Eagles to do that. They're obviously already paying the the high salary cap figures it is, uh, and they're comfortable with that, having it under their cap. So they can afford a little time to wait, and if worse comes to worse, uh, if Bradford's upset that he was on the trade block again uh, and he does play well next season, if you look forward, you can always place the franchise tag on him. So there's some options. Uh, but clearly, I, I think the best case scenario for both sides is to get an extension done at some point. All right, let's look at them a little closer because no offensive lineman here. Now, Chip Kelly kind of said, well, you only get a certain amount of picks. We didn't take a lot of D-backs in recent years, so we had to start filling that area. But – at the end of the day, they did not add any offensive linemen in this particular draft. Is that going to ultimately be a mistake for Chip Kelly's first draft? Well, I don't know if it's going to be a mistake simply because it it depends what happens with Evan Mathis. If he's playing for the Eagles last year, I, obviously you're going to be solid at the left guard position, but 
Uh, clearly, Chip Kelly's not he- happy with him. Clearly, he's not happy with his his contract. So uh, we'll have to see what the end game is there. Uh, you know, it's an aging offensive line, but, it, you know, the age, specifically Peters and Mathis, are still playing at a pretty high level. So I don't think it's going to hurt them in the short term, where obviously it's a possibility to hurt them is is in the long term. And if you look at that fourth round when the Eagles traded out, uh, if you think about the three picks before them, you had that little mini run of offensive linemen. Uh, specifically, I think Minnesota got T.J. Clemmings. Uh, Florida got, uh, uh, um, New England got Florida's Trey Jackson. And those are the two guys I think that could have really helped the Eagles. And that's where, you know, if you believe Kelly is in over his head when it comes to the personnel aspect, you know, that's where you can kind of point to and say, you know, teams kind of played him and knew what he was looking for. And then he was forced to trade out, and he got an extra third-round pick for next year. Uh, So that's going to help down the line. But uh, for the team in, in 2015, I think that was a big concern. Yeah, and then I want to get your thoughts, too, on the uh, – we saw Todd Gurley go, and now he's going to St. Louis, which I think is interesting because their offensive line has been a problem. they got a new quarterback there. They don't have a lot of weapons. You wonder if that was a great fit for him. Uh, and then, obviously, you saw Melvin Gordon go. Two running backs in the first round. We hadn't seen it. We've heard so much about the running backs. Is the NFL kind of changing back to a more you know run-oriented league, or is it still a passing league? Still a passing league. I I think you had better prospects, bottom line, this year. I mean, a lot of people in this league think Todd Gurley is the best running back prospect since Adrian Peterson. So uh, he could have went as high as number six once the recheck came out well, the medical recheck in Indianapolis. So everyone knew the type of prospect he was going to be. He might might end up being the best player in this draft. So that's the kind of talent he had and and Gordon is just a tick behind by the way I mean he's a a legitimate you know bell cow back as we call them the guy who can handle it 25 times and and is going to put up big numbers and obviously San Diego was a team that lost Ryan Matthews in free agency you know they had Brandon Oliver penciled in he's five foot six there's no way he can carry the ball 300 times a year so it just made a lot of sense and again, these were just better prospects than the past two years uh, when there wasn't a running back who went in the first round. Yeah, and you know, you look at uh, the situations where those two teams went, especially Gurley, you wonder if that's going to be a good fit in St. Louis because, again, they didn't really address their offensive line issues that much either out there, and that was really Bradford's problem is the offensive line out there was a mess. And they did have Steven Jackson, who was a – I mean, he's a big physical guy, so you hope that Gurley – fits in well and can succeed in that situation out there but we will see about that let's move on to the wide receiver spot the Eagles got Nelson Aguilar there was a lot of really good wide receivers in this draft but some people would say look you just really got another Jeremy Macklin type of guy they didn't get that big physical red zone guy was Aguilar the guy that you thought was the best guy if you're going to go wide receiver at 20 I think it was a little high. I mean, I had him rated as a bridge pick, you know, a bridge late first round, early second round pick. So he's a very good player. You pick him at 20, if that's the guy you like, it's fine. You know, but Chip Kelly's always a little confusing. You know, one day he talks about big guys beating up little guys, and, you know, then he wants the the, the smaller receiver in Aguilar, who's, you know, six foot, as you mentioned, uh, very similar to Jeremy Macklin. Now, to be fair, though, he he also doesn't have the eight-figure contract. So, you know, that was the concern with the Eagles and Jeremy Macklin is the fact that, you know, he's getting $11 million from the Chiefs. So that's where, you know, the money certainly comes into it. And the one thing I will say uh, about Aguilar is that he's a very good route runner for for a young player, and that's becoming sort of – you know, a a dinosaur type thing in today's environment where it's just about athleticism. So when you have a young guy who comes into the league as a great route runner, I I think that's, you know, very favorable pointing to success and he's eventually going to be a really good receiver. But uh, whether he should have been picked at 20 or, or, you know, 30, you know, 30, 
you could pick hairs as far as that goes, but he's a very good receiver. Well, and I get it. A lot of people have different setups on their boards based on their particular systems, but you wonder if there were better options. You know, a Perryman was out there. That's a big guy. I mean, he's a big physical wide receiver. You wonder if there were better fits for the Eagles system as opposed to Aguilar, who may or may not have been the you know seventh or eighth best wide receiver, but the Eagles would say, well, he fit what we do. Uh, you wonder if there was somebody that fit better than what they do that they passed on. Yeah, well, certainly if you want a guy to stretch the field. And, you know, I, I said the Ravens, you know, to me, the Jets and the Ravens, the Jets, you know, stood still at number six and got the best player in this draft, in my opinion, Leonard Williams. And yeah. then the Ravens in the first round. Uh, I think a kid like per- Perryman, I thought he was going to go in the 15 to 20 range, and, and they hmm. lost Torrey Smith in free agency. Uh, and and that's what he is. He's a deep threat. And if you want to pop the top on the defense, uh, that's the player you want more than a Aguilar. But, you know, the Eagles are looking for the, a more well-rounded receiver. And I think from day one, uh, he's more well-rounded than Perryman. So it's right. It's what flavor do you like and what flavor did Chip Kelly want? Uh, and he decided, you know, to me, the whole thing from an Eagles perspective, you know, when you talk about the head scratching, you mentioned Nick Foles, who's going to enjoy having Gurley behind him in St. Louis as a running back. Uh, the money aspect of it, when you think about trading Nick Foles' contract, which is, you know, basically seven, 800000 for Sam Bradford, and then all of a sudden the dominoes start to fall. That means you can't re-sign Jeremy Macklin, which means you have to go for a Macklin-type receiver in the draft so all of these pieces kind of fit together hey are you buying the what chip kelly's selling to you here with the the third round pick jordan hicks with all these inside linebackers that michael kendricks will be here no i'm not buying it you know and that's a lot of the things that you know but then again jordan hicks is is a project i mean most guys had him rated as a fourth or fifth round talent and most projected him as outside linebackers so clearly the eagles are seeing something in them uh, that most scouts don't see. Uh, And, you know, they've talked, you know, behind the scenes about him being the heir apparent for D'Amico Ryans as the guy being the leader of of that defense in the middle. So that, you know, sends off, uh, you know, a a couple tea leaves. And, you know, does that mean Kiko Alonso could move outside at some point? That's a possibility, especially if Kendrick stays. Uh, You know, you would have to think – uh, you know, as far as long term, if Kendricks is around this season, uh, that'll be it. He would certainly leave as a free agent. So uh, it, it's a team that it has a lot of inside linebackers. I mean, people forget, you know, they signed uh, Brad Jones in free agency, uh, and they'll have Najee Good back. Uh, so there's a lot of bodies uh, in that inside linebacker position. And somebody's going to have to move to the outside, whether it's Kendricks or Alonzo. But then you're paying a, a hell of a lot of money to both Connor Barwin and Brandon Graham. So I'm not sure where, where all these people get on the field. All right, John McMullen, more on the NFL. Check out sportsnetwork.com as the NFL draft is in the books. The OTAs and mini camps will be beginning. And, of course, John will be here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN as more NFL news happen. Thanks, you, John. Hey, thanks for having me, Mike.